All right, guys. So we're going to get into the uh, another one of the five parables of the fig tree. Okay. So uh, remember that Jesus said um, uh, the importance of the parable of the fig tree and to look to the fig tree. Now, if you do um, a search and you realize in Scripture there are actually five parables um, of the fig tree, and they deal with different, um, slightly different subject matter, but when you bring them together, you get the full picture of what many interpretations of um, some of the things and end times mean, okay? So that's what um, we're doing as we go through these parables because they show us what the scripture means. So when you're looking at a scripture, an isolated scripture, instead of just coming up with your own interpretation, allow the scriptures for themselves to interpret. But you just have to find the other place where it gives you the reference as to what it means. So, um, so Holy Spirit is wonderful and he um, encrypts, just like Jesus spoke in parables. He said, it is unto you to know the kingdom of heaven. To them that are without, they must hear in parables. Okay? Um, so if we get the right interpretation, we can see what the parable means. Okay? Now, we are talking about the basket of figs. And the place where we're looking at this parable is in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 24. Okay? And so let's go there. Let's go look at Jeremiah 24 and look at this parable. Um, it is the basket of figs, or two figs. <clears throat> now, to give you some context, Jeremiah is prophesying this as to two people groups. Okay? That are headed into captivity at the time of Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon, okay? Um, and if we go to verse 2, one basket had very good figs. Um, even like the figs that are first ripe. Okay, this is very important. The fig tree, and you can see I have my fig tree here. Um, actually, this is my second fig tree, guys, because I went online. I was like, oh, I'm going to get a fig tree. But people don't buy fig trees for figs. They're like a house plant. And so my other one was a house plant that doesn't actually produce figs. So someone gave me one that produces figs. So I'm psyched. I have my fig tree that actually will produce figs something. Okay. Um, so here's my fig tree. Um, but the fig tree will produce, um, in general, two harvests of figs. An early fig and a late fig. Okay. Um, so we see clearly here that the first basket is the early fig, first ripe fig. So that would be during the springtime and early summer. Remember Jesus said when summer is nigh, so that is the early fig. Then there's a late fig harvest, and that would be in the fall, okay? So here we see there's an association with a certain type of people group with the early figs. And then there's another people group, which is the late figs. Okay? As you go through here, you'll see this more clearly. So one basket had very good figs, like the figs of the first right. The other basket had very naughty figs, it says King James, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? And he said, I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and bad, very bad. That cannot be eaten there so bad. All right? So there are two baskets of figs. Okay? And we're going to go through the scripture to allow this, interpret this as two people groups. Okay? Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, this is the Lord, um, the Lord of Israel. Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I set my eyes upon them for good. I will bring them again into this land. I will build them and not pluck them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. 
So, what we have is a description of the elect. Okay? God is going to plant them in the land in New Jerusalem first. So they go into the land first. I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Okay, so this is God's elect. This is the when the Lord Jesus comes as the Son of Man in in the clouds of heaven, and he gathers the elect, these are the elect. These are the first ripe figs, okay? And they go into the land. They are caught into heaven first. And as the bad figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad, surely thus says the Lord, I will um, give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in the land. So the Lord comes, and then there are other figs that remain in the land. They are still on the earth. They are still here. To them that dwell in the land of Egypt. So the, the, they dwell because Egypt is in their hearts. When the Lord comes, he only comes for a remnant, a small number. But they're the ones that remain in the land. And why? Because they, it, Egypt isn't a place, it's a condition. It's a spiritual state. Because you serve mammon and not God. So, they are stick, they dwell in the land of Egypt. I will deliver them to be removed into the kingdoms of the earth. So what's going to happen is the Lord is going to come, he's going to gather a remnant, and then the majority of the church is going to be here. They're going to be in the land. Why? Because this is Egypt. And they have served Pharaoh instead of the Lord, and then um, then they're going to go through the trumpet judgments. All right? Uh, to their hurt, to be a reproach, a proverb, a taunt, a curse. So everyone is going to laugh at the Christians. Oh, you told us there was a pre- tribulation rapture, and you weren't going to be here, so the sinners are going to be laughing at the Christians. Ha ha. You're here just like us. A taunt, a curse, in all places that I'll drive them. So there'll be a dispersion. I'll send a sword and famine and pestilence among them till they be consumed off the land I gave them to their father. So the consume off the land is till the time they are taken from the earth, okay? So the um, first ripe figs are God's elect, and they're sealed. Then you have um, the other figs. Here they're called the bad figs. They are all the great multitude that's here during the trumpet judgment. So then we have our trumpet, the trumpet blows, and then they're uh, taken from the land. So each is taken from a land at a different time, okay? So um, this is a difficult subject that I, the Lord told me about this, guys, like a year ago. And I, I just had a hard time, you know, just sharing this. It's just a hard message because, you know, there's people that you love and you, you know, this is not my message. This is not my thing. It's just not like, oh, I want to do this. This is the truth. And, um, and it's unfortunate because, you know, your friends, your loved ones, uh, your family, they'll see and know that it's true, but they'll still have to go through these things. Um, you know, and it's it's just sad. It's just, it's heartrending. It really is. It's hard. But we have to understand that God is good, and he's placed us in such a time as this. So there are purging effects of what he is doing during each of these time periods, okay? So... Um, so it's important for us to understand that as they go through the sword, famine, and pestilence, God is trying them. So we can find this in Daniel 11, um, 32. So if we go there, we can see that this very description is in Daniel of, the, um, of these figs and why they have to um, you know, go through the, these things. Uh, now, there's going to be many that are going to do great things. So in thir uh, Daniel... 11:32, um, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits that they may uh, understand among the people shall instruct many. Um, yet they shall fall by the sword, by famine, 
captivity, spoil, um, many days. Okay, so um, so there'll be um, there'll be a, it'll be a difficult time, a uh, difficult time with the sword, many martyrs, um, and, um, and and different things. Um, and when they shall fall, they shall be hoping for a little help, but they shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, to purge them, to make them white, even at the time of the end, it is yet for an appointed time. So this is why, guys, this is why um, this is going to happen, is to try them, to purge, to make them white, um, even to the end. Um, because remember, they made their robes white with the blood of the Lamb. And now, the main thing that contaminates our robes is self-righteousness. I mean, even this message is true, and you know it's true, but you won't change. You won't repent. You just receive it as knowledge in your brain, and you tell yourself, Oh, I'm God's special one. I'm his elect. That's not going to happen to me. But you have to press into the kingdom of heaven. You have to strive to enter the narrow gate. If you don't, you'll be part of the masses. Okay, but you're hearing this message, or I'm recording this message in the time before the Lord comes. Now, if the Lord comes and he gathers his elect, the great multitude's going to be like, we're still here. <laughs> so that's also a reason I'm doing this message, so they can learn and understand that God is good, and this is exactly what God said. Everything God said is going to happen. And, it's, and it's, you can't just pick your favorite doctrine of what's going to happen. It is clear in the scriptures. Okay, So um, there's going to be a great trial and purging process to make them white, to make the great multitude white. Okay, But remember, as we stay on the fig tree, that there are early figs. Okay? So another way of looking at that is new and old. So if we go to Song of Solomon, this expression that we found in Jeremiah, basket of figs, is also in Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13. And it says here, the mandrakes give a smell. So mandrakes is the same word for basket. Um, uh, so the mandrakes give a smell, or basket gives a smell. At our gates are all manner of um, pleasant fruits new and old okay so let's remember that the fig tree produces new or early figs and late figs okay new and old which i have laid up for you oh my beloved so this is for his beloved so let's remember that um both figs all figs are his beloved but there are clearly early figs and late figs. Here it says new and old. Okay? So this expression, early figs, in Revelation 6 it says untimely figs. Now that doesn't necessarily say they're early or late, but it happens during the sixth seal when the 144,000 are sealed. Okay? So again, that gives us a sense of timing. Okay? So, also, Song of Solomon talks about the early figs in chapter 2 and verse 13. The fig tree puts forth her green figs, or early figs, and the, the vines with the tender grape of good smell. All right? So, again, the green would be the early figs, the springtime, um, summertime figs. She said, behold the fig tree. Summertime. That's the time we're in now. So we're expecting the Lord to return soon. But guys, it's important we realize there are two classifications of figs and people. You have early figs, you have late figs. Okay? And you have good figs and bad figs. Okay, now it's, you know, this is hard for me to do. I don't want to say someone's good or someone's bad, but the scriptures clearly speak that the people come out of the land and there are um, good figs that come out of the land and bad figs that come out of the land. And there's two different times, okay? But it's important to remember that they there's a process for all of this, guys. 
there's a process and you have to take your own salvation seriously. You have to go through the purging process, you have to go through the fire. If you don't know what that really is, then you're part of the great multitude and you'll find out, okay? Um, but um, I'm doing all these messages to make it clear that there are two people groups and how um, every, and meditate on all these scriptures, guys, so you can see the characteristics of each one, okay? And you want to ask God. God will show you, if you ask him, to show you um, your state. You know, what are you? Are you, um, are you one of his elect? Are you part of the great multitude? How do you prepare going forward in these last days, okay? And he'll show you. Um, he'll show you, okay? And so, um, you know, these are just things um, that he has, he wants me to share. This, you know, this isn't really fun for me to do either. I don't want to, this, I don't want to have to tell that there's two people groups or whatever. It's true. And so there's so much confusion out there about, um, you know, a pre-trip rapture, this, rapture, all this stuff. Everyone is focused on the rapture, is not focused on the Lord, not focused on the scriptures. Okay? So a couple other things I want to mention too, guys, as we talk about these two people groups that remember when the Lord um, he when he uh, when he was resurrected, he came back and the first person he saw was Mary. So he appeared to Mary first, then to the disciples. So that's important for us to understand because we want to be like a Mary that, you know, when the Lord is here, the Lord is here now, and we want to lay at his feet now, okay? And so if your life is full of noise and clutter and activity and you're trying to fix everybody else, you're, you're not in a good place. Because remember, Martha was all about, you know, let's, we, you know, we have to, there's work to do here. Well, yes, there's work to do, but... We can even see the difference of the attitudes here in Song of Solomon 1, where, where uh, verse 5 says, I am black and comely of the daughters of Jerusalem in the tents of Kedar and the uh, curtains of Solomon. Look upon me, for I, because I am black, because the sun um, has looked upon me. Now it says in Revelation that the sun will no more shine on the great multitude. It says that in Revelation 7. So that's what it's talking about, the sun here. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, okay? But mine own vineyard I have not kept. See? So, uh, when people are burdening you with things of this earth, things of this world, things of this time, let it go. Let it go, guys. You've got to focus on the Lord. Let Who cares if people are mad at you? You're going to be like her where... Um, they were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of their vineyards. But my own vineyard I have not kept. That's what, that's a big thing, guys. You, we have to be like Mir. We have to be at his feet. We have to be the ones that the Lord returns to us first, okay? Then the disciples, all right? So, guys, I'm doing all this to give you all this revelation all this information about the fig tree, the two baskets of figs, the two people groups, so that you know clearly. And you can also prepare your heart and uh, repent and turn to God with your whole heart, just like it says that they would do, guys. Okay? So, um, so God bless you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll have some more on this soon, and we're going to just keep um, giving you guys these messages. So, uh, God bless. Okay?